Okay, we're gonna see if we're live. Good morning, everyone. I'm hoping you can see me and hear me. Um, I'm Joyce Hesselberth, and I'm coming to you today from Baltimore. Um, let me know, you all, if you can see me. So, um, as I said, my name is Joyce Hesselberth, and I'm an author and illustrator. I work and live in Baltimore, Maryland, and like a lot of people right now, we are staying inside and we're staying safe and healthy. Um, and, and maybe that means we need a few more projects to do around the house. We need some things to keep us busy and um, keep learning and keep having fun. So I wanted to talk to you today about a new book that I have out. This book just came out last month. It came out in February. Um, and well, I also wanted to show you some of the other books that I've done in the past. You might know my work from Shapeshift, um, which is a book that talks about how you can make art with shapes. Um, and then more recently, Mapping Sam. Mapping Sam is a book that looks at, um, at maps and how we use maps to, uh, to teach information to show things like, obviously, like where, where you live in the town, but also things like how does a flower grow or what are the planets in our solar system. Um, but today, we're going to focus on Pitter Pattern, and I'm going to share that with you in just a moment. Um, I'm going to read it today with permission from HarperCollins uh, Children's Publishers, my publishing company, uh, who's, off, off, who's so graciously granted permission um, for me to share it online today. And then, after we're done reading, we're going to do an activity that's based on patterns. There are a lot of different projects that you can do to extend the learning and bring patterns into your classroom or into your home. Um, we're going to talk about one today that is about growing patterns. So we'll look at that in the book a little bit and see what, ki what different types of patterns there are. Some of the patterns we'll talk about are are repeat patterns, something simple like A, B, C, A, B, C, and then other patterns are growing patterns, so something that gets small and then grows bigger and bigger and bigger um, by, by similar steps. So let's take a look at the book Pitter Pattern. Okay, so We'll adjust this and hopefully you can see a nice full image of the book. One thing I like to do a lot when I'm uh, working on books, first of all, the covers are, are really fun to design, but so are, are the inside, the case covers. Um, so in this book, it's so full of patterns because obviously it's about patterns, right? So I got to use tons and tons of patterns in this book and I had a lot of fun creating them even in some extra places where you might not think about them. Um, like on the end papers, it opens up with lots of umbrellas. And this book starts off with a pattern. When I was coming up for the, with the idea for this book, um, I thought about sounds that I hear that make patterns. And the first thing that I thought about was raindrops hitting hitting the ground and how they make the sound. They say pitter, pitter, pat, pitter, pitter, pat. So that's how this book started. And um, as I thought about different ways to go through the week, um, I kept adding different patterns that you find through the week. So let's start. Pitter, pitter, pat, pitter, pitter, pat, pitter, pitter, pat. Hey, it's a pitter, pitter pattern. Lou helps her friends take off their wet things. Boot, boot, puddle, boot, boot, puddle. Another pattern. What comes next? Boot, boot, puddle. Ah, oh, then they go have a snack. Milk, apple, cracker, cheese. Milk, apple, cracker, cheese. Milk, apple, cracker, cheese. There are patterns everywhere. How many can you find? So through this book, wherever you see um, wherever you see art, you'll see a bunch of hidden patterns. So on this one, I have um, a pattern of fruit in the basket. There's a Dalmatian dog here that has spots for a pattern. There are other things hidden too, like in the flower vase, you can see patterns there. It goes blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, oh, <laughs> blue, yellow, red. Actually, it switches there. Um, and then here you can see the trees are a pattern too. Uh, 
After snack time, Lou says goodbye to her friends. She'll see them again next Sunday. Next Sunday? Hey, the days of the week are a pattern too. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then it starts again. So I know for my kids, when they started understanding the days of the week, it, it really helped us plan our schedule a lot more and for that, have them know what to expect was coming next. So for Lou, it means Monday is soccer. Lou has soccer practice after school on Monday. She and her teammates practice kicking the ball between the cones. In, out, in, out, in, out. Soccer balls are made of black and white shapes that fit together. These shapes curve around the entire ball. On Tuesday, Lou goes to her piano lesson. Hey, look at the piano keys. Two black keys, three black keys, two black keys, three black keys, all the way up the keyboard. The notes on the white keys are a pattern too. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Lou claps her hands together to learn the rhythm of the song. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ah, ah, ah. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ah, ah, ah. Music is full of patterns. Wednesday. In dance class, the beat of the drum is a pattern. Boom, ba, ba, boom. Boom, ba, ba, boom. And the steps in Lou's dance make a pattern. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. Jump, hop, kick, twirl. I bet you could think about a dance and then come up with a pattern of your own. Thursday, what a nice day. Lou and her dad go for a walk in the park. Are there patterns here? This was one of my favorite pictures to draw. Um, when I was working on it, my editor said, you know, you just, you need to add more things in the front. She said, you need to add some, some sunflowers in the front. Um, and I started to add this whole area, and I feel like that was really what made this picture special, was packing as many patterns as I could. So now you can see the seeds in the sunflower are a pattern. There's some bugs down here. There's a bee and a caterpillar that has pattern. Um, and then, of course, there are patterns in the leaves and pattern in the spots on the deer. And here... Okay, so now this one, this picture is important for what we're doing today. There are a lot of little patterns around here, but then notice these big circles where Lou puts her feet in the water. It makes a ripple, and ripples are, they start small in the middle, and they get bigger, 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 until eventually they sort of fade away. If you've ever stepped in water or thrown a little shells, and there's spotted fish, and here's a nice turtle that has a pattern on his shell. Friday. Lou spends Friday night with her grandma. They curl up in quilts and read a story. The patterns in the quilts all have names. Evening star, pinwheels, attic windows, and Lou's favorite, flying geese. When the story's over, it's time for bed. So if you've ever looked at quilts, my mom was a quilter and she loved to make quilts that looked a lot like this one with all these little triangles. Or this one too. Um, she made a bunch of different patterns, and um, I always think I put this picture in her be in here because of her, because she was a fantastic fiber artist. It's hard to fall asleep. Counting sheep might help. White sheep, white sheep, black sheep. White sheep, white sheep, black sheep. Lou's falling asleep now. And look, she has her favorite quilt, flying geese. The next morning, Lou and her grandma ride the bus to the zoo. Now, if you look really closely, I don't know if you can see it here. <laughs> it's so tiny. You'll see Lou and her grandma right in that bus. So on the buildings, you'll see lots of patterns. The windows become a pattern. Some of them become growing patterns, like this one, and then some of them, or, or if you look at the birds on the wire, that's a growing pattern. There are more and more birds on every wire. Um, other places are regular patterns, like the, the traffic, the, the buses and cars. Those are regular patterns. 
Are there patterns here? Some of the most fun to draw patterns come on animals, and I think drafts are really fun, but zebras are really great too. On this one, I added a lot of extra animals. I was trying to add animals together in ways that they, so that they, I wouldn't combine animals that would um, be predators that would eat each other. And here, Lou loves all the animals she saw today. She can't wait to tell her friends about them on Sunday. Pitter, pitter, pat, pitter, pitter, pat, pitter, pitter, pat. So then in the back here, you can read a little bit more about patterns. We talked about repeating patterns. So things that go like boot, boot, puddle, boot, boot, puddle. That's kind of like an AAB, AAB pattern. Or a growing pattern um, is something like you would find in the puddle where it starts small and gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. So, um, and it also talks here about where else you can find patterns. You can find them in nature in shapes, colors, and pictures, in time, in music and dance, and in weather. Now, in this story, um, it rains on Sunday, and it rains again on the next Sunday, but really, it doesn't really rain every Sunday. Weather, weather is a pattern, but it's not as regular as that. So that's my story. And I want to talk a little bit about the activity that we're going to be doing. We talked about those puddles and how they were getting, they start small and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And I thought it would be fun today to work on an activity that sort of starts from that, from that spot. I was thinking about those puddles, some different colors. I hope that you'll have some of these, um, these items around your house. They'll be easy, easy to get to. What you'll need for this, well, you'll need a few projects. We'll switch back to the top-down view and we're going to look at the items that you need. First, you'll need some Sharpie markers. Um, you'll notice that I am I'm picking certain colors that I kind of want to see together. This is kind of a fun project. You can see a little bit how the colors mix together. So you might want to think about which colors you're going to use. Um, on the samples that I showed you, I used some cool colors in one and I used some warm colors in the other, but you don't have to. You could use any colors that you like. Um, just think about what you might like to see and what you might like to mix together. Since we're basing this on, um, on Lou's stepping in the water, I'm going to use these cool colors that are kind of like the water. You will also need um, a jar or a cup. I'm going to do two of them at, at a time, actually, so that we can kind of like see and keep them going together. Um, you'll also you'll need some rubber bands, one for each one that you're working on. And this is a little tricky. You're going to need some rubbing alcohol. I have some in a container here. This is just regular 70% rubbing alcohol. Be careful with this if you're working around kids, of course, but this is pretty manageable. You can, you can use a dropper. Um, here I have, a, I have a big dropper that we're going to be using to keep it kind of neat and clean. If you don't have a dropper, you can pour it on. You could use a spoon and dribble it onto your artwork. Either way is fine. Um, and that's real. Oh, and then of course we need something, something to decorate. So, Today I'm using these handkerchiefs um, just because anything that you have around the house that's cotton will probably work pretty well. So I've done this with t-shirts. T-shirts are a lot of fun to do, but you could do it with really any, any cotton fabric. So what we're going to do is, this is just a piece of cotton fabric. I'm going to stretch it over the top of the jar. And I'm going to hold it in place a little bit with this rubber band. And then, since we were talking about this puddle, let's think about what Lou's puddle looks like. When you start it off, it's small, and then it gets bigger and bigger. And 
bigger. Okay, and we could add another color. Um, let's add, let's add a little green, just when I think about watercolors, I think mostly blues, but then I think, oh, what about a little bit of green or purple? Could be fun. You don't have to try and be realistic, but we're going to start with something that looks kind of like a puddle. Then I'm going to take some of this rubbing alcohol, and we're just going to dribble it right in the middle. You'll see that it's sort of starting to spread out and the, the lines are going to start to soften and smear together. And even if I just let it sit there and I wait a little while, it'll just keep going. And if I need to add more, I can do that at any point. But I'll let it sit there and, um, and see how far it goes. While I'm doing that, I'm going to start another one. And maybe we'll do warm colors on this one. You see how it's already really smearing out? It's almost to the edge of the blue. We'll see if it travels a little bit further. Okay, so this one, let's experiment with some warm colors. Now we can also do this from a shrinking pattern, from big to small, right? We can really do it any way we want. But you also don't have to just think about circles. Like what would happen if I put in some lines here? It's still a pattern. But this is really fun if you you know play around and experiment with it. And we can add another color. Maybe I'll add a little bit of pink in here. This is a really light color, so it might kind of get overpowered. You'll notice some Sharpie markers um, are, are a lot stronger than others. You'll find the ones that you like best. Just experiment. The thing that I've found works if you if you are worried about messing it up, don't worry at all. Um, if you just keep adding more, it kind of gets cool. So sometimes those things, when you think you made a mistake, actually turn out to be the best ones. Okay, so we're going to go back to my cool ones. Notice how strong the green was. And I'm going to move over a little bit. It's fine if these overlap while you're doing it. You can do it any way you like. Okay, so let's, for this one, let's... Let's make a big star on this one. So we're going to go away a little bit away from the growing pattern and just do a design that we think, but there's still a pattern in it. What if I decide to go around? So now I have a pattern of line, dot, line, dot, line, dot. And we go a little extra bit there. So I've been thinking about what we could use these for, what we could do with them. I'm not sure. If they have any ideas, let me know. Um, we were thinking about, I was talking to my daughter last night, we were, she was thinking about trying it on tennis shoes. If you had some white canvas tennis shoes, you couldn't do the circle part so much, but you could do patterns all around and then dribble the alcohol that way, and that would be a lot of fun. Let's do this one. It's kind of gray and cloudy here today. So I'm thinking it would be really nice to do something that's more of a sun. And we're going to do just a big bright sun, but then I'm going to add some orange to it.
So as we're going, if you have any questions, I'll try and check the live stream and and see if you have any questions, and I can answer them before when we're when we're kind of done with this and wrapping up. That is activities for kids. Um, some of the other projects, and maybe we'll have to do them on here sometime. Some of the other projects that we have are things like relief printing, where you can make um, make a a print and then repeat it on a canvas bag or again some kind of clothing. Um, and then I have a quilting project on there too because I think that's always like a, a, such a great application of pattern where you can quilt but quilt with felt so that it's not not so hard to do in a classroom. Oops, <laughs> I want to keep this one as cooler colors I said. A little bit cooler anyway. I want to do one with a lot of this blue in it and this one we're going to do a spiral for this one you know we talked we saw in the when Lou steps into the water there's a snail shell they have a spiral pattern on their shell let's make I know this blue is really strong so I'm just going to use a little bit of it and maybe uh, maybe a little bit here. Sometimes you do one and you're like, I don't like how that turned out. But then when you add the add the um, alcohol to it, it becomes totally different. Look what happened to my sun. It's very blurry. I like it though. It's you can't tell it's the sun anymore, but it's a nice it's a nice pattern. Okay, and let's do one more on the warm colors, and then we'll spread them out a little bit, and you can see what we have done so far. Let's see, for this last one, let's do do just a little bit. I feel like when I'm doing this, I never do the same thing twice because it's more fun to just experiment and see what happens. You can plan it too much. And I think when you're working, um, when you're working with kids on these projects, it's good to show them an example, but then just tell them to try anything they like to open it up. They don't, this doesn't need to be a a cookie cutter project at all. It's much more fun when it's all different things. And then you can, you know, you can spread them out and say, well, which things are similar and which are different. Okay, we'll give that one just a little bit of time to spread out and grow. So when you're done with this, let's move, move our containers away and you can kind of see what we have going, what we have started. This one's still wet, but you can get a good idea. And then you can just keep filling them up. You know, these would make pretty cool pillow covers if you were inclined. <laughs> you might want to heat set it first before you do that and to heat set things you can either iron them on high setting or um, or you can put them in the dryer on high for a little while and then they'll become more permanent I would still you know just still check them and test them because it's not really sharpies aren't made for this but they're pretty good at it and it's a lot of fun so um, I hope you enjoyed this project um, Again, there are other projects that we have on, on my website that you can look at how to do relief printing or how to do how to make a felt quilt. Um, I'm hoping I'll be adding a few more things in the near future. And um, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a lot of fun with this project. And I will see you again very soon. Check out, um, we have a lot of authors and illustrators lined up. Check out stimolalive.com and you will see our whole 
lineup of wonderful authors and illustrators who are doing similar readings and projects and all kinds of activities all week long. Um, check them out, they're really fantastic and you can find them live on various platforms, but it's all, all listed from stimulalive.com. Thank you so much and I will see you soon. Bye.